Dunn is nominated for Solo Artist of the Year for her remarkable CD, Piece by Piece, of 2012. And the competition for the CFMA is very intense. We have David Franzi, John Ward Hannum, Stephen Fearing, Lynn Miles, quite the group. Maria, you must be very honored to be nominated with such a fantastic group. And I know it sounds a little bit cliche or trite, but man, <laughs> what a group. I am very honored to be in that group. They've all inspired me at different points and with their music, so, um, and, and they're all friends, so I figure whoever wins gets to buy the first round, and then we just have a party. <laughs> that sounds like the, the, the best way to go. It's a folk tradition, I think. So, piece by piece, about peace workers, GWG jeans for people of a certain age who might remember that. The Great Western Garment Company was formed in 1911 in Edmonton and was around until 2004. Um, it employed uh, at one point um, probably about a thousand women, uh, mostly women. A lot men worked there as well, but um, the garment company when they started in 1911, um, actually unionized fairly quickly, and they wanted to um, be able to say that they were their garments were union-made and and tough and resilient, and uh, um, they were selling to farmers and to um, to different unions around the province. Uh, they I think they gradually expanded across Canada. In 1970, Levi Strauss bought a majority share in the company and then uh, sort of gradually the name changed. They kept the GWG name for a while. Uh, George W. Groovy at one point for advertising in the 50s or 60s. Uh, Wayne Gretzky modeled for GWG when he came as a young oiler to Edmonton. Uh, so it has a lot of resonance as a, sort of an icon. We're seen as a good employer in Edmonton. And they were co-founded by the first premier of Alberta. That's a detail I didn't know. Thank you for, for you learned something new. There had been uh, some oral histories already done with women who worked there for different reasons. Uh, there was a group at the university that studied uh, women sort of learning in the workplace and they wanted to look at um, learning for women, particularly women who were new to the Edmonton area and were learning English. Farewell, my sister on the line. We worked for many years. And who'd have thought a factory job would bring us all the tears? But day by day and side by side, a common ground ensured that piece by piece we stitch together more than just the world. I want to talk a little bit about those women. Uh, because so I guess you you had access perhaps a little bit through Catherine at least initially through the research that she did um, what kind of an age range did you speak with we spoke with Asunta Dotto who I think was 87 at the time so she had emigrated from Italy in 1939 uh, GWG was one of her first wage earning jobs and she worked there during World War II um, she acknowledged that there were harsh working conditions in terms of dust and, and heat uh, and the relentless sort of pace of the piecework. But for her, she really valued that opportunity to earn her own wage and sort of pay for her own room and board. Um, so she talked about GWG sort of helping her get started in life. Um, she was one of the older women that we talked to. Nellie Angley was also in her late 80s. Um, she had a great line in there about uh, the blue dust in the plant and, and how the, the dye and the dust, um, you'd go home and she'd say your clothes would be blue, your fingers would be blue, you'd think our blood was blue. So she had a, a really great sense of humor. Those were some of the older women we talked to. Um, we talked to women who'd worked there over... Uh, different decades and from different countries of origin. One of the reasons that uh, the stories were so interesting in talking to women 
um, from some different time periods was that um, you could see the waves of immigration to Edmonton in the changes in the faces of women that worked at GWG. Where I come from, we work hard, we don't make a fuss. So I can't be afraid of a bit of blue dust when my family needs me to pay the bills. Maybe I'm not so ill. I see now from the photos some women wear masks. And I can't help but wish that I'd done more than ask. But ours were the days when you did what you told. You could only be so bold. If I could speak to my younger self, I'd say, never risk your precious health. And don't assume that they've thought of you in your air of denim. So you had women from uh, the Ukraine uh, or Ukrainian-Canadian first or second generation off the farm sort of in the 19-teens and then you had women like Asunta in the 30s and 40s. Um, Canada lifted its ban on immigration from China so a lot of women from China in the 1960s. Uh, we had refugees from Czechoslovakia and Hungary worked there. Um, in the 50s and 60s. In the 1970s, we saw more women coming from South Asia and uh, some women who had come as boat people, refugees from Vietnam in 1979, 1980. So it's a really interesting way to tell the stories of immigration at large to Edmonton and a wonderful way to share our history as a community. Take it easy on me, I say to the fool. Whose face I see in the rippled pool It took so long recognizing myself I dropped the prize I once held Take it easy on me Take it easy on me Wonderful man of folk at Northern Lights Folk Club. Dave Clark, fantastic guitar player, wonderful singers. Thanks, you guys. Thank you all.